this church in tribulation and pain cries to be delivered. Lord, save us. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. Red is always a symbol of sin. Crimson, red. Red dragon. Dragon is always Satan. He's a symbol of sin. The great dragon, Satan. The Bible tells you uh, in Revelations, specifically, the dragon is Satan. Having seven heads and ten horns. Now you that got my teaching on the beast understand the seven heads represents the seven kingdoms. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Gregorian, the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, <clears throat> and the Antichrist revised Roman Empire in our age here that's coming. That's, that's to come. Under a ten regional nation, some type of hybrid UN confederacy of nations, ten regional zone nations. A world government that gives its power to the beast and the prey. A one world dictator that's going to be worse than all the previous dictators that we had in history. And we've had some pretty horrible sort of, of dictators here. I mean, you, we're talking the Hitlers, we're talking the Napoleons, we're talking the uh, Caligulas and the Neros, <clears throat> Antiochus Epiphanes, we're talking the Nimrods, we're talking um, some very wicked men that stand down in history as tyrants, Stalin, <coughs> Stalins, <coughs> Tilla the Huns, some real evil despot that killed millions, millions of people. This guy's going to be worse. And for his death is concerned, it's going to make Hitler looked like Mr. Rogers. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. So seven heads are these kingdoms I just named. And it's and it's <coughs> and this system of government, this beastly system, this ancient anti-God state religions that elevates man over God. That's what the earthly tyranny is. The state becomes God and puts itself in the place of God. That's what Nimrod did. The first Antichrist in the Bible was Nimrod. And he organized his satanic ancient occult religion, which consisted of his perverse family, his incestuous family. He married his mother. His mother was Isis or, or Samaras or Samaras. And she had a son after he died to claim divinity. It was a supernatural birth and she claimed of being a, um, a virgin, which is a lie. She was married to Nimrod. And produce Tammuz. And this is the ancient occult. And she, he became the sun god, her the moon goddess. Notice we got the month, the sun and the moon symbolized here. But Satan already had created this satanic, false, demonic religion. The ancient occult of ancient worshiping creation, the ancient sun, moon, the moon goddess, <clears throat> sun god, moon god, and revised sun god in the form 
of Talmud, which was his satanic version of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is the ancient occult, and this religion has rolled on the backs of this beast, this seven-headed red dragon. On every kingdom, you've had this ancient occult religion of the sun and moon god worship, and this, this pagan religion that's steeped in human sacrifice. is steeped in genocide, rivers of blood being spilled to appease these demonic entities they worship, including children, child sacrifice. The word cannibal comes from Connie Ball, priest of Baal, where they sacrifice, they tortured and sacrificed the children and drank their blood and ate their flesh. Cannibal. Cannibal. That's where a cannibal comes from. Still alive and well today. This is the ancient occult, folks. Having seven heads and ten horns. Ten horns represents the ten toad or ten nation kingdom that's to come. The ten regional. UN sanctioned kings that's going to come in these modern times over each regional zone. And seven crowns up on his head. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven. That's Satan. Him and a third of his, of his fallen angelic beings were cast out of him and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. That's where we're at right now. Satan do not want the age of Christ, because it's over for him to come into fruition. Now, Christ already defeated Satan at the cross. Remember, this is a future event. He's already conquered the world, the flesh, the devil, and ascended to heaven. But we're his body down here. This is, this is the body of Christ, the church. The body is not a denomination or, or religious gang, I call it. It's a bunch of spirit-filled people that has accepted Christ as Lord and Savior and then Lord be Lord and Savior of their life and have allegiance to God the Father and the Kingdom of Heaven, the children of light. So all this is, folks, is the children of light versus the children of darkness. You're either one or the other. It's no in-between. It's no gray area. Christ made that clear with the lukewarm teaching. Get my teaching on that. Uh, um, what was the title of that? Meteor, mediocrity in Christianity. I think that was the title. Christian mediocrity, I believe it's one or the other. There's no middle ground. You're the one or the other. So this is where we're at, the children of light versus the king, the children of the darkness. And this age to come forth where we're going to rule and reign with Christ. We're going to be priests and kings unto Christ. And Satan is fighting that. We're the body that Satan is resisting. The body of Christ. He hates us, and he hates the Jews. That's why the persecution of both is infamous around the world. It wouldn't make any natural sense why Christianity is the most hated religion 
the most feared, and they suffer the worst plight than any religion in the world. Why is that? Why Christianity? Why the mocking of Hollywood of Christianity? Why do they mock Buddhism and Taoism, Hinduism, Islam, and so on and so on? How come many religions aren't mocked? Why Christianity? Think about it. Why Christ? Why does old cult always blaspheming in their rituals? The cross, Christ. Uh, putting the cross up down, upside down and spitting on it. Cursing God of the Bible. And it's Christ. Blaspheme. Why? This is why here we're reading. Satan is the God of this world, according to 2 Corinthians 4 4. Let's go back here, back to this dragon, Satan. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Satan is resisting the age of Christ coming to flourishing through Christ's church. This worldwide revival to get the gospel out the good news to the whole world before the end comes. That's what Christ said. Before the end comes, the gospel must be preached to the whole world. This is where we are. This is what the dragon is fighting. He don't want this worldwide revival to take place. He don't want souls saved and to go to heaven and he's deprived of it, him and his minions. There's a hellish hatred of us that's created in God's image. Satan hates. You have no idea the torture that people face that went to hell outside Christ or rejected Christ and his salvation. They get to experience that hatred and are experiencing it right now. It's a hellish hatred. It's a supernatural hatred that you cannot imagine. And having been to hell, I can say it's no words to express it, what I saw. Fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. I mean, he put, certainly put fear in me. But that's what hell is. It's a prison. Now Christ as we, if you uh, follow street priests, know has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Christ is the warden of hell, not Satan. Satan is just a lackey God uses. Christ has the power of death, hell, and the grave. You know, we want it <clears throat> via the cross. He conquered. And he's over all. It's just a matter of time before he reclaims his earth, as he is as well. And that's what the Christ age is coming up on now. It's where we're at the cross. <clears throat> we're at the cusp of right now. And she bore forth a man child, which was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now remember, this is the future. Christ ain't came yet. He has a came with his scepter of iron to break these clay nations like a potter's vessel, like a clay bowl, clay pot. He has with an iron scepter. He hasn't came to done that yet. Rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Remember, this is future. That's, to me, that looks like the rapture of the church. Caught up. A future event. That hasn't happened yet. That's the body of Christ. 
We're going to rule and reign with Christ. And the woman fled into the wilderness. And the woman fled into the wilderness. There's still a church here. After the rapture. God's dealing with actually the nation of Israel. That's his first church. And then you're going to have the church here that didn't make the rapture. You're going to have people like the 144,000 that's going through the tribulation. You're going to have to go through the persecution. You're going to have to get your head chopped off. If you refuse to recant and deny Christ, that church is here. You're going to have to refuse the mark of the beast. That church is here. Can't talk about it. You're going to have to be about it. You're going to have to resist the Antichrist. And the penalty is death for resist the Antichrist. Because he's going to have the power. And he can't even be revealed, by the way. Until the church is raptured anyway. No Antichrist showing up until we're gone. By the Thessalonians made that clear. He can't be revealed until we're raptured. And I'm, I'm going to touch on that in the end. Just to give some of you a little hope. Just thinking you're going to see the Antichrist. No, you're not. You can't be revealed until... The church is raptured. That man child is taken out of here. And her child was caught up to, unto God. Meaning the rapture is caught up. That's all it means to catch him away. I know a lot of a lot of you Christians don't believe in the rapture. Well, you'll be here. That's what I'm talking about. You could be a church here. That'll be you. You ain't got the faith. I don't want to be here. I don't want to see the anniversary. I'm going to be caught up. Brother Jay's out of here. Arriva Durchy. See you later. But for those that want to go through the tribulation, their post trips, well, okay, you'll be here. Get your head chopped off. Go through hell. Because hell's on earth. Hell comes to earth literally. The beast, the beast is the demon, or the fallen angel, demonic enemy that possesses the Antichrist to make him the beast. It's the same with the false prophet. These are two powerful, demonic, fallen angelic <coughs> entities that possess, that make him the beast and the false prophet. They give him that power. They're just ordinary men. Until that possession happened. The Bible made that clear too. Revelation, same book, made it clear. That the beast is a, is a spirit that possesses a fallen angelic man of some type. And a woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God. Now, this is the tribulation. Three and a half years trib called the tribulation when the antichrist comes on the scene and as a man of peace uh, remember you that follow the street priest we talked through the whole apocalyptic book of revelations but that's a symbol of the antichrist riding on the white horse with no bow looking like a peacemaker uh, christ just means deliverer the Christ is our Christ that we serve, but there's many false Christ, even Christ said, called them Christ. Many false deliverers. But this world, he's, he's going to deceive the whole world, him and the false prophet, as a deliverer of the whole world. The Bible says when they say peace, look out for sudden destruction. And the whole world's chanting peace. Right now the whole world's at old war, so we say when they everybody's chanting peace. That's when you love look out.
And a woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days, three and a half years. That's the first half of the tribulation. Then you got tribulum, the great, the great tribulation. That's when God's pouring his wrath out on this earth. And since man refused to accept Christ's atonement, well, they got to bear what Christ bore on the cross, the wrath of God for sin. And sin is just simply the I factor, I'll call it. You put yourself in the place of God. I, I, I. The, the man is defying God and rejecting his Christ and his salvation, so they got to pay the price that Christ paid for us, that accepted his atonement for us, his cup and copper in the Hebrew, his blood covering for us. So now they have to atone. That's what the wrath of God is. Pouring his wrath out on this evil, wicked generation world that rejected his salvation in his Christ. Now they got to atone for it themselves. That's what the Great Tribulation is about. That they should feed her there a thousand, two hundred, three and a half years. And there was war in heaven. This is future coming up, a future event. Satan still has access to the second heaven. You know, these, these spatial... You got the third heaven. You got different levels of heaven. Paul said, I was caught up into the third heaven. So if you say the third heaven, it could be a fourth heaven, fifth heaven, sixth heaven, seventh heaven, eighth heaven, ninth heaven, eleventh heaven, twelfth heaven. <laughs> I know people, well, I don't know, but I've posted videos of people that have died and been to heaven and said there was, there was areas of heaven even us couldn't go to. There was a different level that we wouldn't authorize, a, like a point you couldn't go beyond. Maybe, I don't know, other new worlds God is building that we're not proprietary to. I don't know. But we'll know when we get there. And there was war in heaven. So Satan has access to the second heaven. Which I believe are the spatial kingdoms that's, that we can't see. That encompasses all these, you know, God, God created billions of galaxies and worlds before you even get to heaven, heaven. That you gotta go through to get there. And I believe that's that place in between the earth where we are. Excuse me. And the heavenly realm, because you see we go through some gateway, a wormhole, whatever you want to call it. Some portal in the Bible to get to either or heaven or hell. And we're in the middle here. And the earth, by the way, is the center of the universe, like God said. And Satan it still has access to what's called in the Bible the heavens. The second heaven, specifically, I'm talking about. And there's always war. In those spatial kingdoms of angels going back and forth having to fight their way. Remember the book of Daniel. It said, Daniel, Gabriel told Daniel, it took me three weeks because he had to fight through that second plate, that second heaven to get to uh, earth, to give him the message. Because three weeks he had to have Michael, the archangel, help him out to bind the prince of Persia so the prince of Greece could come a demonic entity ruler that possesses these men, giving them power. The Bible that you know the key right there. It's not earthly rulers we're dealing with. 
We wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, power, spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's where these high places is. The heavenlies that I'm talking about. These spatial kingdoms. Spatial. Where Satan has rule. But he's going to be subjugated. And that's what this war is about. And there was war in heaven. Michael, who's the prince of the all the well, prince of the archangels, prince of all the angels, Michael, and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. This is warfare. Warfare is happening daily, folks. Every single day. We have those of us that's in Christ. You get more angels. You know, you got the people outside Christ. They got a guardian angel and tell them their time's up. But we did in Christ. And, uh, and some have more angels than others. Sorry, this is the way it is. Depends on the work you're doing. For God. It's just like a thumb up. See what kind of analogy would fit this. If you're in the military, and I'm a five-star general, of course I'm gonna have more security around me to protect me than you. That's you know going through basic training <laughs> in the military, private first class in the military. Of course, we have more security. <laughs> that makes sense. So it's the same in the spiritual realm. Dealing with, you know, God gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. We need to do the work of ministry to get more angels, more protection. Then you had a sheep. You're either an under shepherd or a, sh or, a sh or a shepherd. You're either under shepherd for Christ or you're a sheep. You're either under shepherd or a sheep. But this is warfare, folks, every day. Satan is trying to take our heads off. And God's got angels that protect us daily. This is daily warfare that we don't see. That's why I think I try to every day. Thank God, you know, for his protection for the day. Because I know I don't take for granted. I've had so many close calls. Where I told you I actually died and went to hell fire. But beside that, I've had... I can't tell you how many numerous encounters with death. And I know it was God's divine protection. I should have died. Should have been dead many times. Had many, like a cat, nine lives. But I know it's God. Some of it was just straight up his divine protection. Had nothing to do with me. And some of it might have been some of my foolishness. <laughs> but God, you know, fools and babies, that old saying he looks out for. But it was God. <laughs> it was some of the miracles I could tell you that I've seen for his miracle protection in my life. Oh, uh, yeah, believe me, I believe in it. But when you have a purpose for God, say you want to take you out. It's the point of making it. And this is warfare. It happens around us daily through the heavenlies. When you pray, there's warfare to get you to get their answer back from angels that's set forth. They have to fight. That's what we learned in Daniel when he was praying. It's no different than us. And what you, why my prayer had been answered yet? <laughs> that might be the answer right here. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought his angels. It was a war. This book's a war book. Why you see Brother Jane on play? I ain't gonna water this down to Noah Cookie Easy Bake Oven Cookbook for Jesus with, with a bunch of sugar and honey added to it. I, this is a war book. I've treated it like that. You folks, for years over years know, to me it's just straight up war book. That's how I treat it. And this is why, right here. And prevail not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. So Satan got the boot from the second heaven. See, a lot of people thinking this is a past event. No. Satan has... There's many examples of Satan, by the way, going up to the second heaven to petition God for something. 
Uh, Job, we read about a Job when he went up. It says, you know, he wanted Job. Can I have Job? He had to get permission. Satan so can't touch a hair on your head without God's permission. That's what I'm talking about. He said, he, Satan told God, Job got a hedge about him. I can't touch him because of you, God. God, Satan can't touch a hair on your head without God's permission. So he's limited in his power. He has power, but he's limited. But we have more power. Greater is he that is in us. Greater is he that is in us than he is in the world. We have the Holy Spirit and he got more power than Satan and, and his minions on earth. And he knows it. He just don't want you to know it. So many Christians live beneath it. You know what I'm saying? We're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. It's a victorious life. We should all be living, including myself. You know, I put my pants on one leg at a time like you. Sometimes I get down and, and God's word has to whip me back up to let me know. We already won in Christ. We're more than conquerors. We don't live a defeated life. That's what Satan wants. You do not realize your power in the kingdom of God over darkness. And we're warriors for Christ. This is a battlefield. How many of my message? Raise your hands if you guys heard on Battlefield Earth, my whole Battlefield series. This is Battlefield Earth. And this is a war book. And the great dragon was cast out, and the old serpent called the devil. This is future. Remember? We read back here at some time in the future, Revelations 4 and 1. I'm going to show you the things that occur hereafter. This is hereafter. Satan ain't thrown down yet. He ain't cast out yet. See, people taking that for the when he was thrown out of his heavenly state, his position that he had, and cast out into this earthly realm, but he still has access because well, who Adam gave him the keys to dominion over the earth, and that includes the spatial kingdoms that we have. 